Hello and welcome to my latest tutorial for My Memory Suite Digital Scrapbooking Software by StoryRock. I'm Leslie, aka Took of the Pink Toot Craft Blog, and today's tutorial introduces you to the new and exciting features that My Memory Suite version 2 has to offer. Version 2 came out in December 2009, and this tutorial will only focus on all of the new features that have been added with the update. If this is the first My Memory Suite tutorial that you're watching on my site, please be sure to go back and watch tutorials 1 through 4, as they will contain all of the basics and original features of the My Memory Suite scrapbooking software that the new features have been built upon. If you were to go out and purchase My Memory Suite digital scrapbooking software today, you would automatically start with version 2, so previous tutorials will be helpful for you as well to be able to experience and learn about all of the features that were originally included. Those of you who own My Memory Suite version 1 can easily upgrade to version 2 in order to get all of these great new features for your software. So what's new in version 2? You'll be excited to hear that My Memory Suite version 2 includes 1,500 new background papers, 1,300 new embellishments, and 20 new layouts. These are all prepackaged and come built into the software for you to use right off the bat. Let's take a closer look. I'm going to open up my old tutorial album to work with. This was the tutorial album I created and used throughout my previous tutorials 1 through 4. Those of you with My Memory Suite version 1 will be happy to see that your old albums created with version 1 will be converted for you and work in version 2 just fine. You won't lose anything and it'll all open the first time you start at version 2 seamlessly. Okay, I've just started at My Memory Suite version 2 and you'll notice right away that the familiar software layout that you've been, gotten used to in version 1 is still there. You'll still be comfortable navigating the software and you'll be able to find all of the old features right where you expect them to be. Only now you'll love the extra new features that they've added that make digital scrapbooking with My Memory Suite that much easier. So let's check out the new features. First, you're going to notice that the resource gallery located in the upper left corner here has had a facelift. It still shows the photo contents of any folder of your choosing to make it quick and easy to drag and drop photos you want right onto your pages. But now it also provides a little um, set of icons here at the top for the most often used features of My Memory Suite for quick access. So you could quickly add a photo box, um, you could quickly add an embellishment, a shape, change the layout, add different papers or make word art right here from the resource gallery. If you want to change the folder that it pulls pictures from, you can click here for select folder and you can choose the folder that you want to use. Um, and if you'd like, you can also just hide the resource gallery by clicking the button again and it will slide back over to the left. Okay, so the first new feature I want to share with you is the zoom feature. Sometimes when you're working with a page, you want to line things up a certain way. Before, you had to eyeball it, but with the new zoom feature located down here in the bottom right corner, um, you're going to easily be able to zoom in or out to get a really close up look at what you're doing. Okay, so let's try it. So if I, right now we're at 100%, I can either click here and tell it to go automatically to 400%, which you can see it zooms in quite a bit. Okay, um, or you can just click the, the zoom buttons here the plus or minus to get in as close as you need to. So if you really wanted to line something up perfectly, you could zoom in, get really close, um, and make your adjustments that way. That way you can see what you're doing. This will make aligning up your elements on your page and fine tuning all those little details that much easier. Okay, um, another new feature, let's go back here to 100%. Another new feature here, um, version 2 has added a new word art tab, which you can find over here. It's called the word art designer. The Word Art Designer allows you to create your own Word Art. All right. Um, if you would like to add new Word Art, you can enter the text that you want. You can change the font, the size, the spacing, the style. You can rotate it. You can make it um, various opacities. You can fill it with a certain color or stroke, give it a shadow, bevel, shapes. There's all kinds of neat things you can do to create your own Word Art. So let's try it. I'm going to click Add. And the Word Art's going to pop up right here on my page. All right, I'm going to change up here what it says. If I would like my word art to say tutorial, I'm going to type in the word tutorial here. All right, and now I'm going to change all of these options. So let's change a different font. Let's choose, oh, scrap casual, scrubble. Hey, let's choose this one. I like it. All right, um, I can change the size if I want it to be bigger or smaller. Um, let's make it. Let's make it kind of nice and big. 
let's do this size. Um, I can change the spacing of the letters, the line spacing, if I want to. Um, by changing, if it's, if it's a couple different lines long, I can do that. If I want it to be bold or if I want it to be italicized, I can change that as well. If I would like to rotate it, again, this is just like the old rotate feature. I can either use the slider or I can come in here and manually type in um, which um, angle I would like it to be at. Again, I can change the opacity just like you've done before. Um, the fill option here, you can enable a fill, you can give it a gradient color, a solid color, you can put an image in for your word art, a texture. Um, here's where you change the color choice here. Let's click on that. Um, all of these options pop up for you. You can use the picker which is an older feature from version 1 where you can go through and pick any color off of your page if you want to make sure that everything coordinates color wise. Um, stroke allows you to choose, um, if you enable stroke, um, this is going to be like an outline of your, um, of your word art and you can change the color here. You can make that a solid stroke around the outer edge. Um, you can give it a shadow, like a drop shadow. Um, you can give it a bevel. Um, you can um, enable it into a shape, so if you would like this to be in an arc shape, you can do that as well. All right, so all those options are here. You can give it like a wave shape. Um, change that a little bit here. Make it all nice and pretty. So you have all kinds of options here to create your own word art. This is completely new for version 2, so you're able to create your word art. Um, let's see what's next. Speaking of shapes, your text can now follow a shape. This is a really, really brilliant new feature. Um, I believe that this was one of the most asked questions that I would receive through email, was how can I make my text, my font, follow a shape or be curved? Um, you're going to click on the text tab up here, and you're going to click Add Text. And just like normal, you're going to type in the text that you want. So let me just type in, this is a tutorial. Now your text here, you're going to notice once you've added text, this new feature lights up right here, and it's called Shape. If you click on Shape, you can choose how you want your font to, to shape, um, the way you want it to go. So if I want to do an outside circle, I can do that. And notice it's going to put it in an outside circle. Now when you click here to edit, to make it easier on you, it's going to put it back here at an, at a, um, with no angle or anything like that so that you can type. So if I just said, this is a tutorial and I wanted it to go around a big circle, oh, got a bunch of text here, this is a tutorial, this is a tutorial, and then I click somewhere else, it's going to, no you'll notice that it puts it in a nice pretty arc, and if I kept typing, it would make it in a complete circle, alright? So now you've got this great new feature. If you wanted it to follow the, the shape like of a square, let's say you've got you know a square that you want the text to follow. Sometimes I like to put my text along the corners. Um, you can easily do that now, um, but I think that this whole arc making a circle with your text is one of those things that everyone is going to love. Like I said, this was the most asked question. Everyone wanted to know how can I do this and with version 1 there was no way to do it. I uh, would tell people they'd have to create something in like Photoshop and save it and import it as an embellishment but now you can do it and you can change it on the fly to add to any page. It's a really really brilliant new feature.